On today's show, things get a little nutty. We make about 45 million nut rolls a year. We're making a classic candy that's sure to satisfy any sweet tooth. Grandpa ate the same nut roll you're getting today. We head to Pearson's Candy Company where our candy dreams come true. People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this, Americans spend more than $20 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. Well, that's where we come in. Each week, we throw open the factory doors and give you a behind the scenes look at how your favorite gear is made. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Board Review Lodge. Growing up hunting and fishing with my dad, I could always count on him having a salted nut roll along for the trip. Now we get to see how this iconic treat is made for the outdoors. Pearson's Candy has been in the sweets business for over a century. Their headquarters in St. Paul, Minnesota is a real life candy land. Pearson's Candy Company started in Minnesota, in Minneapolis, actually in 1909 as a candy distributor. I was digging through my uh, desk when I arrived here and I found this original ledger from 1909. So I had to flip through it and basically found the original Articles of Incorporation from the state of Minnesota, May 20th, 1909. Then in 1912, they decided to be a manufacturer and made our famous nut goody. So that's our oldest brand. Then in 1933, we launched our famous salted nut roll. During the depression, we launched a new candy and it took off from there. I'm guessing these pages here from 1933 are talking about the challenges of the depression and how you launch successfully a new product during that period, which is pretty amazing. Despite other popular brands, the salted nut roll remains at the top of their roster. So it's our most widely known product in the Midwest. It's our number one brand. Just how popular? We make about 45 million nut rolls a year. That's a lot of nut rolls. So nutty, in fact, some might call it crazy. We move through about 2.8 million pounds of peanuts in this facility. It's all 100% made right here in St. Paul. Who could pass up the opportunity to explore a candy factory? I call this lunch lady chic. So what's the recipe for making a candy classic? A little sweet, a little salty. So tell me, is the raw sugar sitting up there in those vats then? Yeah, so the sugar comes into these cakes here. We get a truckload a day of sugar. Wow. Uh, so we use 40,000 pounds of sugar a day. Like any good recipe, it all starts with good ingredients. So our sugar is from North Dakota, and then our corn syrup is made in Iowa from corn from Iowa and Minnesota. And of course, you can't make a nut roll without peanuts. We can't grow peanuts up here in the Midwest, so we purchased them from Virginia or Georgia. First order of business, cook up the heart of this tasty treat, the melt-in-your-mouth nougat center. We bring in sugar and corn syrup, we mix those together, and then we cook them, then we whip them to make a fondant sugar sort of like you'd have on a fancy cake. A lot goes into making the center, but that extra attention is what sets the nut roll apart from other candy bars. It was Pearson's that put it around a nougat center with caramel in between and created those delicious three layers. 
because of the way we do it, you get that, you know, warm nut roll flavor right in the middle of melt in your mouth, but uh, firm enough to stay as a bar. Where's all that gooey goodness going? Find out when Made for the Outdoors returns. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Borderview Lodge, Ice Castle Fish Houses, Aquarius Home Services, Car Arms, and by Keystone Light. Keystone Light, always smooth. Celebrate responsibly. Welcome back to Made for the Outdoors. When you invent a recipe that stays popular for a near century, there's no use changing it. It's the same tried and true recipe, so Grandpa ate the same nut roll you're getting today, because you can go see how we make it, and it's the same old-fashioned process. We take great pride in that. Turns out, this is your grandfather's salted nut roll. It's really interesting because the people who invented the candy trained people who retired, that trained people that retired, who trained people that retired, and then we're trying to learn, okay, how do we keep it still that same delicious taste while also trying to modernize it a little, you know, it's a fun challenge to make sure we're true to the brand and are making it as best as it can possibly be. One of the original processes is shaping the nougat center. This machine behind me is from 1950. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The nougat oozes down from above like rain from the candy heavens. Because we have that marshmallow nougat in it, it's full of little air bubbles. So we don't want to push it very hard because the air bubbles will squish out. So we let it gravity fall from the kitchen down into the moguls and into the starch mold. In the candy world, starch molds might seem a little old school but they're used for good reason. It's a little bit slower process, a little more gentle, but it really lets you play with the chemical composition of the sugar. So they're just firm enough to hold the caramel and the nuts on the outside. But if you squeeze them a little bit, they turn right back into marshmallow. While the center's cool in the molds, another mouth-watering ingredient is made from scratch. Uh, the liquid sugar, milk, a little bit of palm oil. The recipe combines powdered milk, sugar, cornstarch, and a little oil and salt. Then the mixture is cooked at 240 degrees. It might not sound sexy, but take a look at this. Life is all about balance, so if we're gonna have sweet, we gotta have salt. Peanuts give the nut roll the perfect balance of salty and sweet. They also provide some nutrition, if you're into that kind of thing. It is a good source of protein. We actually, we love that about it because it, we, we joke that it's almost like uh, protein candy or pro tandy because it is a great source of protein, but you get your carbohydrate hit as well. That'll keep you going. Protein candy or pro tandy, whatever you want to call it, it's time to get rolling. Assembling the nut roll is another process unique to Pearson's. Nobody in the world is making a candy bar the way we're doing it. It starts with a layer of peanuts, followed by a rivet of caramel. Then the nougats are hand placed on top. But don't blink or you might miss it. Uh, the operators that do that, the bar formers, that's one of our more challenging positions to learn. They're placing 150 centers uh, a minute. So their hands are moving almost faster than you can see. Another layer of caramel is added on top before the roll is squeezed together. Like the starch mold, their rolling process hasn't changed in decades. Some of the equipment, like the machine that rolls the bars, was designed and built here by Pearson's in the 1960s. 48 hours later, our nut rolls journey ends in the ever familiar red wrapper. So the floor wrapper, you know, takes each individual bar, completely encases it in plastic and seals it in tight so that you get the freshness from the factory, stays in the bar when you buy it from the store. The candies are packaged and shipped to store shelves near and far. Yeah, so then we take our bars from there and then we hand pack them into cases. Those cases then get stacked into pallets and those pallets will go to distribution centers. Those distribution centers will then ferret them out to all the stores. 
So what's the best place to enjoy the treat? Just about anywhere. Pearson's Salted Nut Roll has been tried and true for outdoor enthusiasts forever. We have a lot of folks, when they're giving uh, their kids a ride to their soccer practice, they'll give them the bite size and say, this will help sustain you through your game. But if you're going out fishing, going out to the deer stand, you're going to walk miles for pheasants. If you're a golfer, throw that in your golf bag. This is going to sustain you, and it's easy to throw in your pack. It's not going to melt. It might freeze in those cold winter months, but uh, it'll still be delicious every time. But buyer beware, these bars are so delicious, it's hard to know when to stop. If I don't eat, I can survive the day, but as soon as I try something, I end up eating five nut roll bars and a pack of bit of honey by the end of the day. I don't know what the equivalent of a freshman 15 is, but coming to Pearson's, I definitely put that on. Innovation will always be at play. We will always innovate and bring new flavors. We continuously play with new formulas. But at the end of the day, you can't beat a classic. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by All Seasons Garage Door, Fish Fighter Products, North Dakota Tourism, LM Fleet Supply, and by Warner's Dock. Lake Superior life tends to bring out people's toughness, an eternal outdoor thread in a place that looks like this. Tucked away between early December snowdrifts, Kevin Kinney wakes up his workshop. I am nuts. <laughs> this is not what normal people do. I have been in this garage for 20 years. This is work, yeah. I, sometimes I get out here at four in the morning when I wake up. I have no adult supervision. <laughs> so some days are really productive and other days I find myself making a tent at noon going, I should be making clothing. By now, you probably understand that Kevin likes to sew. His business started with outdoor gear for people with disabilities. Just a mitten you could open with zippers. Changed lives for the better, but never made a dime at it. And one day this guy walked in with these funny looking mittens and this anorak and he said, could you make these for me? And it was Dwayne Loddick from Empire Canvas Works. And I said, yeah. And he wrote me a check, which was phenomenal. <laughs> that guy, Dwayne Loddick, proprietor of Snow Trekker Tents and Empire Canvas. Dwayne needed to focus on building tents, so he and Kevin made a deal. And I became Empire Canvas Works. We've probably turned out $2 million in product from this two-car garage. Today, we are gonna make what I'm calling a jack pine vest. Um, and it is a vest made literally from a USGI army blanket. Kevin loves to work with wool. But wool is a wonderful fabric. I mean, sheep are not terribly smart, yet they survive. <laughs> this pile of panels is one large wide vest. So, we've got two fronts, we've got a back, and the back is, you know, a fleece at the bottom, and it's gonna be the inside of this pocket. We've got zippers, I've got a little bit of reinforcing to go down the front, and I'm gonna start putting this together. After he cuts parts. I anchor this little piece of PVC truck tarp material. Great stuff, super strong. Kevin starts to sew. You can put it inside this two layer suplex pocket and this is gonna guard your garment. <laughs> Once around on the outside. And just for good measure, once more. Now, Kevin drops the hammer. This kind of pounding board has seen a bit of use. These wonderful rolled rim spurred stainless steel grommets. People say, how long does it take to make something? And I say 38, 39 years and a couple of hours. Right. <laughs> yes, Kevin's used a lifetime of trial and error to create his gear. Look around the garage. He also lives the outdoor lifestyle. 
that's why Kevin and his family live in Duluth. There is just something about being up here and being so close to all of this fun seven days a week. It's a fun, fun machine. Next, he sits at this complex looking machine. Basically, all it does is make edges clean and pretty. I am going to put the snaps in this and then it takes about 20 minutes to do the final assembly and it becomes a vest. Hand crafting meets art. I wouldn't really call this clothing manufacturing just because it is so back and forth. It's such a process. If I had to say anything, I would say old school European craftsmanship. Probably a reason we haven't been knocked off that much. <laughs> What I've learned over the years is that if the wool has anything abrading against it, it's going to just tear itself apart in short order. So the draw cord on the bottom or any of the draw cords that are on any other part of the garment always pass through one of these little tunnels of nylons. Kevin hopes others might better understand his craft and maybe, more importantly, his passion. In large part, we as a country don't know how our clothing gets made, and I absolutely love what I do. It is my hobby, my life, my passion. It is the thread of a Northwood sewer. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Polaris Industries, Husqvarna, and by Kearson Salt and Nut Roll. Modern bows, high-tech tools that put arrows downrange and on target. Thing is, little upgrades can make a big difference. Exactly why Vapor Trail cannot keep up with the man. Vapor Trail was founded in 1993 by shooters that were frustrated with inconsistency and common problems that you would have out in the field for bow hunters and target archers. Our shop right now, our headquarters is in Ham Lake, Minnesota. Rory O'Loughlin runs this bowstring and cable company, a workplace of people passionate about their sport. I love bow hunting because I got into it as a kid. I grew up in the country and running around the woods with my brothers. Vapor Trail literally invented limb-driven technology. Their system keeps arrows on the rests longer. The company's newest high-tech offering looks like this, the Gen 7X. This is our top of the line rest for 2020. Basically what the arrow rest does is it supports the arrow during the draw cycle and, and during the shot. The key to the new rest, as soon as arrows fly, the support will actually drop away to clear for your veins so you have no interference with your veins. Vapor Trail now produces the rest as fast as workers can get them out the door. The production process starts with CNC machines over at QDP Technologies. Workers load raw stock aluminum, router bits quickly cut out individual parts. The whole process happens pretty quickly. Troy Holian then checks initial parts. We'll check up the 99 dimensions in three seconds. Parts pass quality control and get colored before heading to Vapor Trail's main facility. So with the Gen 7X, we have 14 different colors in the cage. Kyle Mornin now loads completed parts into this machine. All I'm doing is just setting up the etching machine. If I can just go ahead, hit go, and it'll start. We laser etch them here in-house, all of the tick marks and all of the graphics that we have on the rest itself. At this point, Kyle stages 30 separate parts he will assemble into one unit. Just going ahead and putting moleskin on the bottom here. I'm going to go ahead and put the grease in. And I'm just locking down the spring retention. Go 
ahead and put together the micro adjust main bracket. I'm just checking the, the Springer tension here so that it's actually going to actuate for you. So your windage and your elevation. And we'll go ahead and put the bracket onto the base. I'll just put the cage bolts in. Just add our dump tag. The arrow rest now sits ready to go into the package. And then our backer card. The Gen 7X, built out of passion for bow, arrow, and life outdoors.